All right, welcome back to our regular scheduled meeting, uh, January 3rd, 2023, 6.30 p.m. Ms. Barney, can you call the roll, please? Sure, Mayor Lowry. Here. Vice Mayor Grimm. I'm here. Councilman Bond. Still here. Councilman Cook. Here. Councilman Eggleston. Here. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Councilman Roglon. Yes. Seven numbers straight. Yeah, thank you very much, Councilman. The case will be done by Pastor Chris Eden. Dear gracious Father, thank you so much for allowing me what pledges to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> I mean, action on the regular scheduled council meeting for December 19th. Two Second. Second. Motion by Mr. Lindsay. Second by Ms. Eaglesack. Any discussion, council, on those minutes? All right. When you're ready, Ms. Barney. Okay. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Councilman Rogel. Yes. <clears throat> Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. Minutes accepted, 7-0. All right. Well, we're back to communication, continuation of the TIF presentation. So um, uh, I don't know who else was next or anybody had any questions, comments, or feedback from the presentation. Oh, Mr. Brown. So is there a downside to TIFs? I think we touched on the downside a little bit earlier. Uh, to the extent the city is counting on the money to go into the general fund, it does reduce that general fund contribution benefit. Um, <coughs> again, you get into the, as I said earlier, so much of the TIF is about the numbers, looking at what your need is, and balancing the various priorities. Um, and that uh, results in things like the percentage. Maybe you don't do 100%, maybe you do 50%, so you can still have 50% of the money going to the general fund. Um, maybe you don't do 30 years, maybe you do 20 years or 15 years. It's all a sliding scale as you're looking at your costs, your numbers, what it needs for a project to work for. So there's not one size fit all. Uh, you're you know, trying to optimize how those numbers work within those couple of years. Sure. So, from property taxes, we have, correct me if I'm wrong, fire levy, DMS, and health levy. Yes. And that's Minus, it. I think there's a few other ones. Because we have one prior, the, we have a, we have a old fire one from back in the day, the perpetual. So that one would be captured because it's after 2006. But all the current ones we're doing for the fire and EMS and health levy, they should not be count, ca captured since what? they were done after. They would right, not. Those township levies or city levies? Those are city levies. Okay. Those still would be Cap captured those because be they're city rather than township levies. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> so those, those funds would be affected? Yes. For the term of the TIF up to the percentage of the TIF. So you cannot make the TIF so it, it does not affect them? Not, it, not, you can't specifically exclude a levy from a TIF except for the school district levies. You have your protected levies for incentive districts, which you can't do anything about. You can exclude school district levies by making a, a non-school tip. Well, those aren't our levies anyway. They're not your levies anyway. So other than that, all the levies are on the same boat for the tip. So that's why maybe you're looking at, again, not doing 100%. Maybe you're doing 75%. Maybe you're doing in a shorter period. Then say the fire department would only get 25%. Of it. Mm -hmm. okay. So you look at that from a budgetary impact and weigh it against the cost of the infrastructure and how much more. You know, it's all a sliding scale as you're looking at the numbers. We're getting that look from the fire chief. Thank you. Yep. Mm -hmm. The uh, Mr. Manson. Correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Bridge, but the income tax levy, uh, the income tax, the TIF does not affect the city income tax, correct? Correct. Okay. 
So the 5% for the police levy would still, would not be impacted, but the fire levy would be impacted? Uh, so I, I think you have a specific percentage of your income. Uh, our income lease, taxes. And then the fire is all real property tax. Yes. Yes. Okay, then that's correct. It, nothing changes about the income tax. We do not have income tax tips in Ohio. Okay. So that is all unaffected. It's just the real property tax levies, which in this case would be fire, they would be affected for the tip period. And that would only be on the new bills, mm -hmm. correct? Only the new taxes, only the new Okay. Taxes. All right, thank you. Okay, so it doesn't it doesn't change what they're getting from current. Correct. Okay. And, and yeah. It's just and they could possibly get more because as these homes get built, property values can rise go up for existing homes. So, you know, one way a lot of communities look at it is that uh, a TIF will slow the increase in your taxes. Typically does not entirely halt the increases, um, but it'll slow it because for a while they're being diverted to the TIF. Mm -hmm. Eventually they all come back when the TIF expires, but it, it slows the increase. You keep talking, I keep coming up with questions. So the TIFs on the on the amount or the percentage or the length of the TIF would actually depend on how much the infrastructure costs, correct? That we have to pay back. The, yeah, those are all parts of the equation. So okay. what you can pick as council is length of time and percentage of the TIF. Okay. Uh, there'll be an infrastructure amount that for any particular development, there might be that gap I was talking about, that if you want the project to go forward, you've got to figure out a way to fill that gap. And you, in a lot of cases, will back into the number of years of percentage to make that work. Okay, all right, thank you. Thank you Are there any fees involved with this or anything that, or is it just a straight money just slide? It's typically just a straight money slides. You know, it looks like any real property taxes, the county has a very small collection fee. You, you see that already with your ordinary levies. Same thing for a TIF, they just allocate some of that to the TIF. And so they'll deduct that before they even pay it via, beyond that. Um, what is one of the fees What is what, and if any, what, where, how is any, the, any risk to the city as far as over, over this entire program? Yeah. What's, what's the risk? So from an economic risk standpoint, you know, except for the diversion of fire levies, for example, there's no economic risk in the city if you set it up in this reimbursement arrangement that we're talking about. Because it's just truly money in, money out. <coughs> You're not promising anything beyond that to any developer for the interest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mr. Bridge. Uh, can you explain to our council, because I know this is new to them, how vastly common this is for residential developments and, and um, correct me if I'm wrong that most cities use this funding mechanism despite their size and wealth. Yep. So uh, I have done Excuse me, sir. repeat that one more time and the last of it. I didn't oh, know how it. common this is and how cities use this funding mechanism despite their size or wealth. Okay. Thank you. So um, residential incentive districts uh, very common throughout the state. Um, I've worked on them in a lot of different places, a lot of different cities. Um, most of them, uh, so I, again, my office is in Columbus. Uh, I've done dozens of them in Columbus, uh, as well as in these incentive district tips in, I think, almost every suburb surrounding Columbus at this point. And that's, you know, all, all ranges I've done them, not only in the city of Columbus, in communities like Reynoldsburg, Gahanna, New Albany, Hilliard, Dublin, it, they're very, very common because uh, they do provide, uh, you know, there's continual infrastructure challenges. <coughs> and, you know, sometimes they don't do them for a full 30 years, sometimes 10 years is enough, and it's over relatively quickly, but most cities that have been experiencing housing growth have used this tool at one point in time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do we have to have a, a separate tip for each development or will one tip work for all the developments? 
we got we got two developments going to be happening apparent maybe mm -hmm. uh, so do we need a separate tip for both of them or can we do it all under one tip you can put it all in one tip fund um, and and this is getting into some of the nuance but uh, what you'll probably end up wanting to do is even within these developments stagger the incentive districts and the tips so for example, if you have a 200 house development, normally those are done in 20 to 30 phase chunks at a time. You'll have a separate TIF for each one of those. They could be passed under the same ordinance. That's fine. The money could go in the TIF fund. But you'll probably end up with a separate incentive district just to match up the timing for those phases. Again, if you're picking 30 years, each incentive district is good for 30 years, no matter how quickly or slowly the homes get filled out within that area. So you really try to match it up to the phases. And again, it goes back into some of the economic calculations I was talking about. You might find that a series of, you know, five to six incentive districts within one development that are 10 years long a piece but are staggered well, after 10 years, they each start rolling off. You might have 20 years of TIF revenue, but the TIF starts rolling off the first phase in year 10. And so then you get the develop, you get the revenue from that early phase, rather than say have 20 years or 30 years for the whole development, and you have your TIF revenue uh, diverted for the full 20 to 30 years for all phases. Okay, thank you. Again, that, 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 that was good information, I told because I was under the impression from from the presentation and, and, and talking that we did one tip for the entire development but if we can do it in sections then that would benefit the city quicker than doing a tip for the entire thing over a longer period of time uh, so next monday night i'm going to uh, another central ohio community to talk about an incentive district tip ordinance in that case they're doing 10 years 70 percent for a lot of the same considerations we're talking about here. They've carved that one development area up into 19 separate incentive districts for the phase. So that is on us. We can do that if the developer has nothing to do with that? It, 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 we ask the developer for their phasing because okay. you know generally they'll have, uh, they know what they're gonna do. They're not, they know how they're gonna build their infrastructure and open up their phases. So we'll ask them because we wanna match it up. Okay. I do not have anything. Um, <coughs> does council have any questions? Would you like Mr. Daniels to reiterate a certain part? Um, I know this is a lot of information being thrown at you. I'm sure we'll have more discussions on this as it comes yes, through. I'm sure. I'll we'll invite Mr. One Daniels one back, uh, especially help us with the <laughs> legislation and all that stuff. But yeah, council will definitely have a chance to cater it to what's best of the city. We'll work on the back end on giving you guys those numbers and working with the developers. Uh, but I think it's a win-win. Um, I think it's a very good funding mechanism. And the uh, less risk to the city, the better. Uh, my address is for me. Mr. Dan, uh, you're not Daniels, you're Jeffries. <laughs> you, yeah. you got me there. Uh, everything that he said tonight, do you agree with? what he said and this presentation as far i mean it, he i mean there's nothing in there that got you that he that we didn't catch or he didn't point out correct uh, no no I mean, and i'm only asking because you know where my mind's going with this yeah um, so i mean he he definitely specializes in this area of law it's not my specialty or anything like that i mean i i know a lot of this but not to the extent that he does especially the part of as far as negotiating agreements and stuff like that and mm -hmm. you know the multiple steps and all that so he's the person to ask but as far as the information he presented at all it sounds good to me okay uh mr may so one more question uh mr bridge when we get into all of this uh Will we be getting an attorney that knows about all these tips and stuff, or will we be, 
This is our attorney. This is this is the con. Yeah, this is. Oh, it's been we nice to be the told us that. Hired, <laughs> I, I've said multiple times throughout this. We've hired an attorney out of Columbus to help us through this. Well, I didn't know this was when you hired. <laughs> okay. Thank you for answering my question, sir. You're very welcome. You're very welcome. So he actually works for us now, right? Well, not really. It's, he has, we haven't signed the agreement yet, but we're, we're working on it. <laughs> Well, if it's over 10 bucks, I don't know. <laughs> yes. I even made an attorney laugh. <laughs> Who said they didn't have a sense of humor? <laughs> well, they all do. I did want to ask, Thank you, sir. I did want to ask counsel. Um, I know there were some audience members had questions, so we could do this two ways. It's up to you guys how you want to handle it. Um, but if you plan on staying to the end of our meeting, then we can just wait till comments from the members of the public, or you could let anyone who has a question regarding to that topic only get an answer. I would say let him go now so he can get on the road. We think you're so late. Okay. Uh, are, you guys, yes, are you okay with that? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So. The way I understand it, will be multiple. Be multiple. It, it'll probably make sense to have all. It could be say eight in each one, depending on how the, the layout and development process goes for how they develop that said property. You know, I think you're asking between the two as a whole. Are there going to be two separate ones? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there will. But within those two, there'll be multiple within each one. Does that make sense? So here's your two developments. Okay, and then you're going to have multiple under here, and then multiple under here. So let's just say this is Arbor Homes, four phases. Four tip agreements. Dr. Horton, five phases, five different tip agreements. Does that make sense? But they won't each be given like percent, I'm sure that I'm sure that will all be the same. Whether it be seventy percent, I'm sure that'll be across the board. But again, I don't want to speak because I don't know what council is going to end up voting. She, you can do them separate separately. percentages, separate terms. I say administratively. Almost no one does that. They they do on the same term percentages within a within a development. Generally consistent from development to development. It just it gets hard to track. Yeah. Okay. So will the amount of money that you collect be the same as you have one of the two? I'm assuming again it will depend on how we work out the, the yeah. tip, each yeah. program for each tip under each division. Yeah. Uh, Just all the new. Okay, that's what I had thought before, but then when you asked the question about this type, I thought that this is probably the Just just what they're building. So our property taxes is still building that was that was the hypothetical home that I was buying. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. And just down the road, so it may be 8%. I'm just using a number out here. It could be higher than 8%. Let's say it's 8%. They won't collect the same because you're, bou you're bouncing on these property values being the same. So in order for collect the same, all the property values have to be the same. Our property values in development A may be lower than development B. So if it's 8%, they're still going to bring in based off that percentage. Yeah. Anyone else? Mr. Mills. Mr. Mills. What did it say about the Yes. Yes. Matthew Mills, 285 Seller Drive, Newport, Iowa, Iowa, 4344. For the record, I am a member of the Principal School Board, but I'm here as part of the Citizens Committee for myself. A couple of questions. We um, do a great presentation. I'm here to be talking about the Board of Thank you very much. Um, just kind of some more maybe specifics or kind of some hypotheticals. So the, let's say that the city goes with a no school plan. So the school district is 100% of their funds. Um, so they're going to get property tax. Let's say it's a 10 mil levy. So 10 mil levy is spread out in the total property taxes. And these new developments get built. Theoretically, everyone in the school district's property tax should go down and the new levy not passed. But is that no longer the case? It will stay the same for the term of the tip, okay. generally. 
because as you know with the way the levies are calculated there's a lot of different things to go into it mm -hmm. so for example and we certainly see this if that development causes other property values to rise in the city that would then push down the tax rate so it, it's it, it, it gets pretty complicated but uh, in isolation uh, what you're talking about is if you have um, certain appreciation on property, mm -hmm. it will reduce some, not all levies. Mm -hmm. So that effect will not happen during the, the term of the tip. Okay, so the new construction itself doesn't reduce the levies in general. There's a few where it does, but most of them it does not. So uh, say it again. So the unusual language, say, mm -hmm. say it's a 10 more levy, that is spread out proportionally as per property value very much of those living in the city. This tip as each new home is built, that added property value does not get appropriated into the existing levies. All it does is that the existing levies is spread out and much more, so it effectively lowers the tax rate for each individual. But this tip will negate that. What I'm saying is it's complicated, and okay. for some <coughs> levies, potentially, that could be the effect. Okay. Uh, so for your normal operating that are just set at, at a millage. Mm -hmm. um, the new construction value from a newly built home would actually not lower the tax rate. That just creates additional money for the school district. So that's your run of the mill levies. What you're talking about is the reduction factor, which happens on appreciating value. So in year one, the new construction <coughs> value wouldn't lower the tax rate. In year five, if there is appreciated value, that could potentially lower the tax rate of you get into rounding and maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. Um, a, another example where it might be a little bit more direct is I don't know if the school district has emergency levies that are fixed at a dollar amount. Mm -hmm. So that dollar amount is currently spread across the entire tax base. Absent a tip that could reduce, you know, depending on what else is going on, it could reduce the overall tax. But because the TIF is keeping it off the tax rolls, it won't for that particular type of budget. So it, it depends on a lot of factors, but it could happen. It just won't necessarily happen, if that makes sense. So the answer to the first question is the second question would be, one thing that has been kind of pro argument for these developments is that if they bring a new lower base, the local school is going to pass the one that's going to be No new money. So there is talk that a new lower base to bring in possible buildings to go to do that. If passing this requirement tax level. So if the SIP goes into action and the school is passing a new level, will they see that money? Does that go into the tip or does it stay out of the tip? What will happen to that? For a non school tip, mm -hmm. it stays out of the tip. No school district knowledge is captured in a non school tip. Okay. So what happens if that happens for the ones passed after this is visited? Still a non-school tip. No school district knowledge, whether it's existing or passed in the future, is captured by the tip in a non-school tip. So the city's revenue would go down? Um, the revenue wouldn't go down because the city's capturing other mills, not capturing any of the school district mills. The percentage of total taxes that are being captured by the tip goes down because you have a higher percentage of school taxes. If there's any left. Okay. Good, Mr. Wills. Yes. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Yeah. I have two questions. Number one, are we only considering this because there's new development coming? Yeah, that's yeah, that's the whole reason. Okay. Yeah. And what is the benefit of doing a kid versus doing it the way the city has always done it? And just not doing it. Well, well last time we took out bonds and Twin Creeks did not develop fully. And what happens is because of this, the lots didn't get built out, the city's been paying on those infrastructure bonds without having any revenue coming in. So we pay around eighty-three to ninety-three thousand dollars a year off bond payments that we should be collecting if Twin Creeks at that point in time would have been fully built out. The way you do it like this is that you put it back on a developer to develop each phase accordingly because if they don't develop the phase, they don't get their money back. So it puts it back on them. So we have no risk, like we did back with Twin Creeks with the bonds. You can't do that. You can't put it back on the developer without I mean, you can take out bonds, and then that really didn't work out in our favor last time. 
And this gets back to the first slide, because um, we're starting to hit on, again, this, net, this is not a legal test, but you know, the conversations always come back to the but more test. Would you have the development you want without a tip? If the answer is yes, there's really not much of a reason to do a tip. But we're seeing more and more that the answer is no, that there is that funding gap because of increases in prices that you need to figure out some mechanism to fill that gap. One of them could be selling city bonds that the city is on the hook for if the development doesn't fill that. The city doesn't want to go back there and do that again. Most cities don't. Um, what we're talking about is a reimbursement tip where the city's only liability is taking the tip money that it receives. It doesn't have to supplement it with any other kind of money and using that to reimburse the developer who is spending the money on the infrastructure in the first place. So again, it all comes back to that but for test in my opinion. Again, not a legal requirement, you don't have to show it, but because of conversations like this that you know, they happen all over Ohio, it, it's good to think about whether you really need the tip to make the project happen. Okay. The answer is no, don't do it. The answer is yes, and you like the development. That's when you get more serious about it. This is an excellent way to keep uh, an area that's developing an, a an area that kind of helps pay for itself. That way your taxes are not on the hook for this particular area. It's only the area that is being developed. So if you're not living that area, your taxes remain the same. So it's just a streamlined way to kind of focus on that area. I do believe the green was built the same way with tip, 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 or, and tip money, but I could be wrong about that. Maybe I'm getting confused with the JED, but um, it definitely, definitely is a very successful proven measure of getting things fine. Yeah, and, and I know in a previous meeting we had a county commissioner here and they've used TIFs on what, three three developments mm -hmm. now, housing developments just in Springfield. It's a win-win for both parties involved. And, oh yeah, and they did the garage, downtown garage with mm -hmm. the TIF funds. How long has this type of program slash funding been? I mean, when did some, this program come about? So the specific uh, residential incentive district tips we're talking about got enacted in 1998. Okay. Some of the other tips, the commercial, the urban redevelopment tips, they go back to the urban redevelopment movement in the 70s. Okay. So the, those are kind of the first ones. But then as Ohio started to see more and more housing and, and realized it needed more housing, uh, they enacted the residential <coughs> Does anyone recall why council back in the day chose the bond option Pardon opposed me? to the TIF option for Twin Creek? No clue. Um, <coughs> not many. Hey, any other audience members on this topic? All right. All right. Anything else, Mr. Bridge? Council? All right. All right, Mr. Thanks Davis, thank you for your time, time, sir. I'm sure we'll be talking Thanks, to you sir. again. Hey, Matt. I can you email know, you that out Yes, and then also we'll go through with the rest of our agenda and we'll get back down to the normal comments from the public and any other topics tonight. So, alrighty. Get back down to communications for the uh, Arbor Homes. Are we going to have to go back to school? <laughs> We're under communication for all their homes. Oh, let I me mean, give me a second. Are we ready? No, oh, okay. And next up, we got a loaded council meeting today. Um, we have Paul Metzger from Arbor Homes. Uh, council will be introducing legislation pieces tonight. Again, they are just for legislation uh, introduction. Any um, let any action on the ordinance pertaining to this development will take place at the 1-17-2023 meeting. And before we get started in this particular area, I know we had some uh, council concerns with the potential enforced annexation. Um, just so we're clear on that, uh, Jake does have case law. He is reviewing it. We don't have an answer tonight, but we'll have an answer before you guys vote. Next week, uh, on the 17th. Okay. Yep. And you'll have it before that. We just got to give Jake some time to go through case law. All right, so Mr. Messenger, good evening. Um, anything you wanted to start off with? or Thank you for 
having us here tonight, um, council members and mayor. Uh, for, for just a second here. So uh, we had we've had three meetings with the planning board uh, since July, I think June or July, and uh, the last two here uh, in in November and December. And in those meetings, uh, we've done a lot reduction, which is uh, noted in on the first page of your report. Uh, we started out all the way back in April at 315 lots, went uh, originally presented at 311 dropped down to 294. That was primarily due to widening our lots to 55 foot and 65 foot and able to enable us to meet the, uh, I believe, now adopted uh, side yard setbacks that were not adopted at the time. Uh, we are proposing a PUD, RPUD uh, here with a preliminary plat approval and an annexation um, from the township. Uh, this is 294 lots is what we're showing. 184 of them at 55 foot, 110 at 65 foot. Again, setbacks 25 foot front, um, seven and a half foot side, and 30 foot rear. The planning commission uh, went along with a um, recommendation on the on the lots on that north uh, street that dropped those down to 20 feet. Just our lots got a little narrow there because of the existing lots uh, over. So the line up with what's that? Gotcha. And and line up with the rest of the community. Um, we're showing. Um, Multiple open spaces. Open spaces will include landscape entry monumentations in uh, open space A and B. Open space C, which is a large park in the center, will be an HOA controlled uh, community park, uh, which will be for our residents' use. Uh, we'll have a playground structure there and a multi sports court. Um, landscape er, area D um, is uh, to the south there on the existing road, and it is uh, a landscape monument area, as well as we've added some mounding there to shield uh, the neighboring property to the east to help give a little privacy and they're concerned about traffic, or pedestrians walking through that are currently doing that now. We're, just, we're, we're hoping to avoid that with a six foot mound with some landscaping. Uh, open space E and F are proposed open space uh, sidewalks to the school district or the school property. We still need to work with the school to get specific approval for that. Uh, but the intent is just to make it, it uh, pedestrian easy for the for the uh, eventual students to get to the school property, whether they have a bus, maybe they can eliminate bus service or what have you. Uh, and then we have a couple of open space uh, G and H, which is just some access to the community park. Um, one time we did show some streets on some old things here, uh, which is here and here. The streets were really serving our homes. We seem to have a lot of value. We just put more streets and moving and things. So we put some sidewalk access with the pedestrians to be able to do that. So we can make them run the park. So don't on the property that should be in the property. Um, roadway system will build about 1100 uh, or I mean 11,000 um, lineal feet of, of streets or just under that uh, is what's proposed right now uh, based off this plan. Uh, all be built to your uh, standards which I believe Brandy has told us is now adopted to be the county's subdivision standards. Is that correct, Brandy? Your public street standards and match. Oh, yeah, we have this thorough thorough plan adopted by yes. the county, yes. Sorry, I didn't hear you. Right. <laughs> um, the, uh, with the TIF discussion, which, you know, we're really not sure what we're going to do about a TIF here. With, you know, we've talked to the city about whether you would entertain it. We don't have cost yet or anything like that, so we're really not prepared to talk about or seek any money. Uh, again, it's one of those things where that, um, if you need it um, uh, there. But with, with all that uh, talk about phasing, 
we have not broken out specific phasing, but I think as that attorney said that, you know, 30 or so lots is typical. Ours is probably a little higher than that, maybe 30 to as many as 50 per section. Um, we'd like to pave once a year and hopefully be our sales pace about 50, 50 homes a year. So <clears throat> our initial phase we do 50 and then we kind of judge it after that on how, how the take down goes. Um, ideally the community park would probably be on about section three just as it works its way across, just to, you know, to get to it on section one would be probably 100, 125 lots, and that's just that's too much. Mm -hmm. um, so that's that's really <coughs> where we are in this presentation. Again, worked very closely with your planning uh, board and Randy and his staff, and I think uh, made some changes along the way to, to hopefully uh, make everybody happy. Thank you, sir. Happy to answer any questions you all may have. Thank you. Any questions? Mr. We'll go this way. Uh, okay. Mr. Mom? Uh, my only question is the traffic. What's the plan for 300 cars in that or more cars per home in that V intersection down there? In the, uh, uh, the city have a traffic study in mm -hmm. So we had a traffic study we shared with council. Um, so we have a, that V section that would be nubbed off and there'd be access road going from Addison, New Carlisle over to 235. Uh, but we'll still have to work with the property owner and stuff like that. But that's what the traffic study suggested. And then it looks like where so you say work with the property owner, what does that mean? So we have to acquire some land to have it cut through through Addison over to two thirty five. The city would have to buy that. Well yeah, the, yeah. Okay. I'm just trying to figure yeah. out what, what the plan is. Well, we, we can talk, we can throw that in, we can capture that in the phase one too. So all that will still be determined if we could throw that into the TIF or not, but it will need to be constructed, yeah. I mean, because even, pri even prior to this, even if there's, if this does go through, is, I mean, that intersection is always kind of crazy with that. that oh, it's, it's horrible. Out. So, mm -hmm. so even if we did do this, it, it would be a good, good proposal to go forward with it anyway, but yeah. And correct me if I'm wrong, but broader, very broad discussions that could be uh, paid for through the TIF. Yeah, well, yeah, that's right. what I said. We'll probably capture that in the first phase of phase one because it'll be need, need to be constructed. It's not, it won't be much. Right. No, it's requiring the right of way. It's developing. It's all. It's a signal. It's it's a lot of stuff. And then, don't get me wrong here, but we still we have access off of Scott Street mm -hmm. and uh, off of Leatherwood, right into. Yeah, the, our intent would most likely be to connect both uh, Ashley and Carl and, and Scott. So my only question is, I would think that that would need to be nailed down before we would progress with this. But what happens if that landowner doesn't want to sell us property to the road? No, uh, we'll intimate domain and probably end up taking it. Okay, that doesn't seem right. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> in the highway 129, it goes from 75 into Hamilton. My aunt and uncle lost the house for intimate domain because of that. So it's something that council will have to decide, but um, <clears throat> it's vacant land now. It's empty. There's no structure on it. So hopefully they'd be entertaining. But for the good of community, it's at the avenue we could look at it if they don't choose to. You know, but. Okay. I still think it's kind of backwards the, the process, unless we're just saying, okay, we're going to go in the domain. They don't want to. Well, you can just have it actually just have an entrance off of Leatherwood and Scott, too, if you're not interested in having one off Addison for a while. But I'm, I'm not mm. big on taking something from someone to benefit somebody else if there's another way or something like that. Well, that's something that the rest of council would have to vote on. To be honest, you guys have to have that discussion and council as a whole would vote to move forward or yeah. not. Sure, sure. But I think that is probably some, a piece that needs to be nailed down before we go and decide. Because once you start a development, then you are kind of locked in. Well, you have, a, you have different options. 
So I, I, would, I would kindly argue that you really don't need to know that because let's just say that that doesn't work. We have different options to connect. We'll have an entrance off Leatherwood. We'll have an entrance off Scott. There's your yeah, and if it doesn't and then work. It's no, it's no more, and that's how much the development off 235 has. They have two entrances in and two entrances out. You know, so if it comes down to that, that some council can definitely entertain, and I understand your concern for sure. Um, go ahead. Yeah, and if it doesn't work, we, it's not like Addison Carlisle is going anywhere. We, we, they just go if down you, to Addison yeah, Carlisle. We Addison put up a four-way stop. We, we would take a look at ways to improve that instead of going through that <clears throat> cut through. Maybe look at ways to improve that D as opposed to taking that land to go through. Uh, but taking the land to go through, I mean, and I hate to say that because hopefully they'll entertain selling it. Uh, be much better for the community as a whole because then it's going to line up with, uh, with um, hopefully when we need a commercial development off the 235 site mm -hmm. it'll be almost right across the street so from a traffic flow standpoint it makes total sense <coughs> it does. but let's just say that doesn't work out there's still many options for this to go through yeah, I just, yeah i'd like to see the option i guess you know, before we lock ourselves in and then uh, it just seems like it'd be an unwise decision to go ahead and sort of have these guys commit to building and everything and dump all these cars in here um, if we don't have a plan that actually mm -hmm. that out. Well, this is just preliminary. Mm -hmm. So they've got a long time to go before they get the final engineer plan. Right. So I don't think there should be any concern about this particular vote being delayed past the next meeting. Um, maybe if you don't have the information for the Callahans, but as far as anything else, I don't think it warrants not voting on it. Thank you, Mr. Mon. I'll just go down with Mr. Cook and Gavin and Mr. Fleischman. Well, I'll ask the same question I asked the last development, the fire chief. <coughs> sir. Yes, sir. Do you get in yes, touch? Yes, sir. We have, we've already had long talks with uh, Mr. Bridge and the first uh, entrances and exits and that type of thing, but having access off the of Leatherwood. Scott and off Addison Carlisle or 235, uh, it gives us plenty of access to all the, to all the development. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, what is your projected build out? Is it seven to ten? I and mean, I know it's hard to yeah, get. Yeah, I mean, we'd, li we'd like to get rolling about 50 a year, so you know, it would be in that range. But again, with this, I mean, frankly, today's market, <coughs> I can't commit to that, but that, yeah. that's our marketing plan. <laughs> Three years ago, we would have said a couple of years. Yes. <laughs> but th this is a good place for us to be with the air base and, and other jobs <clears throat> on the east side of, of Dayton and Winter Springfield. And, and we do think it's, it, it's even in this time, we get I mean, even, you know, if you go north, Troy, Piqua, right. I mean, those, those cities are growing industrial wise, right. much larger. That's right. next for us. And so. Thank you, Mr. Lindsay. Two questions, one for you and one for the city manager, or the attorney, I'm sorry. The, uh, what will your uh, models be at and what type of models will you be building? Will uh, they be they'll, single stories or two stories? You, you usually we'll do two on the manager's side, we'll be ideally at the front entrance. We'll work with the building primarily here. A lot of times we'll skip off on number one and do a model two and three. Uh, first one is usually a, uh, a two-story house with a third-car garage that we use for third-car garage to come to our Sanford Center. Uh, the second one often, not always, often is a range just to show, you know, it's easy to show two, two different styles. Okay. Um, we build 12 homes, 12 styles of homes that are um, primarily slab on grade, we still basically an option. Uh, but we'll build 12 homes with varying elevations, we've got 60 different Do what, I'm sorry.
So if a potential buyer did want a basement, is it that there is that option for them to put a basement in? Basement, third car garage, if the lot's wide enough, the 65 foot lot will always accommodate a third. Okay. 55 sometimes, depends on the house that they choose. Um, if you want a Formica countertop, we'll say a Formica countertop. If you want a quartz or a granite, we'll say that. It's just, you know, all kinds of things that people put in to make those choices. Okay. The, uh, <clears throat> thank you, sir. Uh, I'll take it. What's up? You're not a lawyer. Don't matter. Uh, on intimate domain, Mr. Bond was concerned about just taking the land, but it's been a while since I've read the law on that because I used to have to have that information. But you can't, you just don't take the land. You have to buy that land, but it's at a reduced rate, correct? Sure. So it isn't, you're taking it, they're just not getting market value for it. You're forcing them to sell. You're forcing them to sell, and they should get market value, whatever their property would sell for. Is that they're, not correct? They're entitled to just compensation. Right. So. That's why I was going with that. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> One more comment. Uh, does that does that clarify it a little better for you, uh, Mr. Bond? It still sounds like tape. <laughs> well, when it, you don't have a choice. Yeah. <laughs> well, I understand eminent domain. I understand right. that they, they get compensated, but it's still they're forced into a corner on something. Right. Well, that that'll be a discussion that, that <clears throat> council will have to have, I think, uh, <laughs> and then we'll have to decide what we want to do with that. Uh, <laughs> If there's another way we can get around that without forcing the sale, maybe they'll be they'll say, okay, you know, if we talk to the city, talks to them, and, and uh, you know, offer them a little more, or maybe the uh, the builder because they're they're buying all this land to begin with, right? Maybe they'll buy that land and not have to do intimate domain. Yeah, there's, then a, there's it's all options. it's all under the the TIF. Then I think if I'm correct. You can't, we can structure it that the first phase of the tips would cover the cost of the. Okay, okay. So I will say that I think the, if my understanding, again, I got involved in this thing in, in March of last year, but I think that road intersection is beyond just our it is. community. It's, yeah. some, it, it's something that the city Needs has to wanted to. Well, we would have to annex it. Right, but I'm saying it with or without mm -hmm. a community that, that, is that part of the city that wanted to be okay. addressed. So, uh, I, I think we're helping to, to the table to help address that if, if the TIF comes to fruition. Mm -hmm. uh, use those funds rather than your general funds and things like that. So. Okay. So that traffic said I invite council to just kind of revisit it because it was a lengthy document, but there's some really good information on there. So there's some improvements on Main Street that are warranted with or without the developments. And then, of course, with the developments, there's also improvements uh, as well. With one of them noticed that, that split between Addison and, 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 um, and Main Street. But again, just revisit that because it is packed full of good information. That particular issue, it's not warranted to fix, but it'd be in the city's best interest with or without the development to kind of take a look at that because it is a very, very dangerous uh, beat. Um, and now that we have the gunshot coming in there, there's going to be a lot more traffic coming that, that route. And I yeah. think that was in that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Despite yeah. economic growth, it was yeah. recommended that yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I think that we could go back to get with engineers and have a different drawing board if the council doesn't want to go through that cut through. Maybe we just look at other ways to improve the beat. Now, now the, the land that we're talking about, just so I'm clear, is that where the fee store is? Or is that where the, the carpet the, store is? I, I, I don't. I think it's a feed store. But don't it's a feed it's, store, is it? It's, be, it's past the feed store. It's. I think it's... There's there's a garage that sits on it now that doesn't really... really <coughs> I don't think there's anything on that. I think it's the well, feed it's, store and there's like a grass of land and then... The, and then the, the nursing home. home. Yeah. yeah so okay. Nursing right. home and then there's grass and then there's a garage and then the feed store. It's a little south of the nursing home. So, what we, so it would not... If, if we did intimate domain... Mm -hmm then it would not impact a business owner, correct? It's the feed store that you would take the, some of the land from. Feed store? Or it wouldn't, it wouldn't impact the feed store. It's the so it's nursing home, home set feed and supply. They have a little gravel thing. Then they have another set of barns. So it's right here is the area we're looking at. Mm -hmm. So Poland, between Poland tile and carpet, mm -hmm. and this garage right here where home set feed, feed store used to be. So that garage belongs in the feed store. 
So it'd be between these two spots. It'd be coming in between those. Okay. Okay. Well, that, that's that's a little off of what we're talking about here, but that's something we'll have, the council will have to address at at some point. For sure. So, thank you, sir, and thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Lindsay. Ms. Eggleston, you have anything? Um. Yeah. Um. Would you be willing to use local contractors in the building? Yeah, I mean, typically what we do, we, op we do open it up to the local contractors in the, in the markets to guarantee specific use of hard press to do. I mean, you know, we have, you know, we have to qualify them and you know, get their bidding and everything else, but we're happy to open it up to any local contractors. Okay. Yeah, it's really, it's, it's in our best interest. Um, so one thing I didn't say about Arbor Homes, I don't know how much Randy told you. So we're based in Indianapolis, uh, build about 1,500 homes a year there. We came to Dayton uh, in Columbus in 2021. At the end of 2022, we've closed about 60 homes in the two markets so far. In the Dayton area, it's all over in the Union right now. We've got a bunch of programs just at the end of the year and first of the year. So we're really building our subcontractor base locally. So if there are references and so forth, we'd love to hear from them. Um, you know, one thing when, you're, when you come to town as a new builder, you hire and fire a lot of plumbers along the way, <laughs> so to speak, until you get the right team working for you. Um, you know, we, we, uh, our goal here in the Dayton market is to get about 450 homes long term uh, per year. Uh, it might take 10, 10 years for us to be there. We're, we'll never get to 1,500 homes. I've been in Indianapolis and been doing that for 28 years in Indianapolis is just a much more robust market. But the company has expanded to that mission here to be in Cincinnati, Dayton, and Columbus, but actively right now we're in Dayton and Columbus. Okay. And I have to agree with Mr. Bond. I don't like the eminent domain things at all. That's for your governing body to decide, but again, we're not there yet, but again, it is a, it, it, it does occur. It's a last resort, but taking a little piece of land to put a road is, is uh, I think, having new development is way more important than that. And it's also taking money from the city, so I am totally against it. That's how the country was founded, though, wasn't it? <laughs> That's how, how we were founded. <laughs> but I got you. Listen, it's a last resort mechanism. I'm sure there will be ways to get things done without having to do that. Um, but again, it's we're not even close to having that even on paper yet. That's all. Right, thank you, Mr. Uh, I just have just a couple things to say because they kind of hit some topics. I was, one, I love the uh, models that you sent in. Um, and I like how you spoke about you know, breaking it up so it doesn't look so copy and paste on every single house. That's a big thing. I don't <coughs> like that work, so that's great. But the models look really great, so thank you for providing those. And um, that's really all I have for I've already heard the other answers. So thank you. <laughs> um, I guess that's it. Yeah. Um, I will, um, actually I will do this because we did it for the other developer. <coughs> Uh, Longest council has ever any just on this topic. If any of the um, audience members have any questions for them, because we did you, you guys have any questions for that. Okay. Yeah. 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 Ideally, we'll be charging and Yeah. No, I don't even think that would be really no. much of an option because there's some there's some tight turns back there from heavy yeah. construction. So they would all probably right. Unless down the road, once it's built so far out that you know your local funders coming in, and that yeah, that'd be no big deal. <clears throat> Go ahead, sir. Thank you.
Yeah, I don't know yours. I know I have pretty much everyone else's. Yeah, um, just as, you know, real quick, um, I mean, we, you know, I think many of us on council have talked to some of the members of the school board or, or Mrs. Crew herself, um, but um, we're actually, Tecumseh, in my opinion, is in a much better position, for example, or the fact that, they, you know, from an elementary standpoint, they've got an elementary school that's set in basically at Iowa. Uh, so if they have enough students that they would say, okay, we're running out of room, I mean, it'll take them some startup money because they'll have to, to staff it and things of that nature, but it's more or less a brand new school that they can staff to, to take the influx of new students as far as elementary. Uh, I don't know about the middle school, but and Dan, you may be able to correct me, but I know the high school, uh, their numbers have actually dropped over the years. So they've actually got quite a bit, and even at their peak um, student count with the new building, they were never maxed out or anything. And now their numbers are down. So they're in a much better position, say, you know, what Bethel probably was. So um, I haven't heard anything. I've talked to Paula numerous times. She, she hasn't stressed any, you know, concerns of that to me. I don't know if she has anyone else. But, um, I mean, right now the high school sits at 54% capacity. Um, middle school is a little bit more just because it's a little smaller. Um, but <coughs> West, uh, West uh, <laughs> Wow. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. New Carl Elementary, which would be the most impactful of, of the elementaries, um, would be able to shift. Right now, we, we bring in Park Lane to the, to the New Carl Elementary. Um, they would probably most likely shift to the Medway, or Medway would end up being the K through one school. Um, Medway, I don't know if you're familiar, but Medway and Donsville are the exact same, basically, school. So one's at one level, the other's two levels. Same square footage, same number of classrooms. Um, I mean, will there be growing pains? Always is, um, for anything. But I, I think, you know, given that these school, I mean, these homes, I mean, this is a 10-year build, most likely. Uh, seven, you know, um, the schools will, will, will adjust, and they'll, they'll start to get the funding from the property tax and, 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 and the new students, where they'll be able to start to hopefully earmark enough to get Medway up and running when it, when it needs to. But um, the people I've spoken with um, are, are looking forward optimistically by an influx of, of, of students and growth and diversity and, and, and things that the Comsa Local and New Palau has lacked for, for quite a few years. So. Yeah, we, the, I mean, you know, you know we're not there yet, and I would imagine that we could go with a tip that wouldn't pull from the school so they wouldn't lose any money. Um, but as far as using a tip for employment or salaries, you can't do that. Anymore. No, not, I was saying because you wouldn't pull. Oh, okay, okay. That was the only thing. Gotcha. I mean, obviously, you couldn't use it. You know, like, okay, I misunderstood what you were saying. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, I misunderstood you. I thought, you know. I mean, to be honest, I don't think we've, we've discussed the tip option, which one we're going to Right. You know, leaning okay. towards, I think it's the one where the school is not impacted at all. Yeah. Okay. Um, where they well, stay. That, that would just be the concern. Because, you know, <clears throat> I've, you hear, I'm sure you hear this, you know, it's going to be a little bit of a thing, but the growing things that I've always been. Oh, yeah. You know, oh, yeah. 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 Oh
Yeah, and I think that you know most of us up here, all of us on the team, know that Trump's is you know, it's, you know, in a tight budget right now, and I'm one of them. And I think that with this, this developments, that it, I think it will bring a new voter base that will uh, hope, hopefully help them pass a levy that they most definitely need. So I think that would be it, and I think that they see that possibly too. So hopefully it's a win-win for both of them, both of us. So. Anything else? All right, thank you, ma'am. You would have to go to the light, turn left to the cut through road, and then turn to go up the house. Okay. Mm -hmm. But that side wouldn't be blocked off. No, it's all going to be nubbed out. So you, if you're coming south on Addison, you're going to be forced to do that cut through. You will. Mm -hmm. But you won't have to put up the block. No, 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 mm -hmm. no. It'll be, it'll be sooner than that. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you have anyone else in this? By the, by the developers still, and that was actually part of the city's so They didn't want to maintain those. I mean, so the people that live within the development. Yeah, there'll be an HOA fee per year that'll uh, pay for and manage those uh, grass cutting. I mean, part of our policy is even the property manager has to visit the site at least once a month, which doesn't sound too unreasonable to me. But <coughs> take pictures for us to know that they'll keep an eye on the place and properly be maintained. You know, I, I jokingly said I think two board meetings ago for the planning board. I mean, no one's policing it to make sure that it's only HOA residents there. There's going to be signs that say HOA residents there because of legal and liability reasons. But yeah, that was my next question. Yeah. kids are kids. <laughs> yeah, kids are going to be right. But we will have signs that say for resident use only. But we're not going to run around with police doing that. So. Right. Uh, the next thing you guys may have talked about this one too late. Because um, my property will back up to the central development, which is kind of easier for the students. Their yard is going to be right where the property is. I mean, the yard will be right where the properties are. Typically, our, our yards, we wrap our yards in five foot drainage easement that is for, for the uh, adjoining property owner and the HOA's use. Um, so you'll probably have benefit to that. We probably don't, won't get one on your property for the same. But, yeah, yeah. You know, typically. So you space space. Space. No. no, it'll be the property will go to the fact your property. If I'm understanding where you are, you know, generally, but there's a five foot drainage easement that allows for. Um, <coughs> <coughs> they're not maintaining it, you can go in there and maintain it or vice versa. But early on, when I first started talking about this, I was led to believe that there can be additional space or fence for distance to be achieved. Which, um, I mean, if you don't mind me stepping in, where, where, where are on what, uh, Bay Area? 16. So is that? He's lot 68. Okay. Or 67. Okay. Are you the last house before Leatherwood or second? No, no, no. Okay. Um, that one from the, from the Crafts house? That's correct. Okay. I'm sorry? I, I grew up on Bayberry. I <laughs> 809. <laughs> so, 
Yeah, he's 67. Okay. I was just curious how many houses were going to be built on that back. It looks like six. Yeah. Behind you. Yeah. No, I understand. <clears throat> Like you said, that's going to be the last to be developed that we're talking about. I don't know if it's the last to be developed. So, uh, I don't know if Anyone else? Four. Yeah, I just have a couple of you. You're fine. Uh, Steve, Stephen Callan, 1769, Madison. Uh, appreciate the opening floor for comments. And I appreciate that the council is looking at the big picture, not just <coughs> this development and what the money, the revenue that's going to generate, but looking at the, the ripple effect. You know, the effects on my property, the effects on the property we were talking about as far as the right way, the impact on the schools. Uh, I'm retired Air Force, and I'm, I guess I'm just throwing this out there for Arbor, and they, and they probably already know this, it's not a sound of anything. After 24 years of service, I can tell you if you're trying to attract uh, military to this housing, you've you got to have a school. I can tell you, we at Wright Patterson were willing to live in Oakwood and pay extravagant taxes so that our kids can have good schools. Uh, I can tell you, I've had homes that I've owned in areas that didn't have good schools. I could sell a house when it was time for me to move. People want to hear us. They, they love the home, but they say, what's well, your school district? And as soon as I told them what it was, they were out the door. So if you want to attract uh, Wright Patterson folks into this, uh, you've got you to do what you can to turn to this. Uh, you, can't, you can't impact the schools. Uh, if if they, the schools were worse than what they are, then definitely they're not coming. I can tell you when I sponsor new people under the days now, the first question they always ask is where should I go for my kids? So that's important. Uh, the other thing is uh, I appreciate uh, the conversation about the traffic flow. Um, we talked about Scott, we talked about the current Madison and Carlisle, but we, we already know that it's meet up at the same point. If you go out Scott, you're eventually going to make it to that, that V. Whatever, it's not really me, it's kind of a three four way right there. Uh, so that's going to be kind of an issue. Yeah. And I did also have a question, and I think it's already been answered about the green space. I know there's going to be that wet area for my concern of the property owner of that. And I know it's an arbor, it's a good, uh, best interest to keep that looking professional, looking good. You know, that's your, that's your showcase when right. you come in there. But my concern, of course, is the homeowner wants the homeowner to go. Um, and the catch basin, just correct me if I'm wrong, you'll have at least one, if not two, circulating <coughs> pumps right there. To, I, sorry. I said in this catch basin, you'll, you'll have at least one, if not two, circulating pumps, correct? This, that's a dry pond. Oh, that's a dry pond? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it'll only have water in rain events. I mean, all, all in really all, we've had some water filtration tests done, that, and, and you can talk to the city engineer. Uh, consulting engineer, we don't. They don't believe that'll have any long-term water, and it's only three feet deep. Okay. With the excavation itself, and yeah. comparing to the the one across the street, Addison, New Carlisle, which I've been told by lots and lots of people that never has water. In it. Now, if it was to down the road, who'd be responsible? Like, if we said, okay, it's been three, four the, the, years. The, yeah, the the HOA typically, and we haven't gotten into what all your subdivision standards, but typically the the storm sewer structures are the responsible to see. Okay. Um, so anything that dumps into it and the outlet, anything in between, the cutting the grass, the maintaining of everything else is up to the HOA. You know, we haven't set fees specifically here, but you know, fees typically in a community like this with you know, uh, you know, you know, meet, you know, probably you know, if you have low, medium, and high amenities, this would be a medium. Uh, you know, we're on the swimming pool, and you know, I guess 350 to $400 a year per 
per resident is what they're going to be paying. They're probably going to pay like a four or five hundred dollar what they call capital contribution at closing. They got to pay some money in it. Really, that, that's intended to immediately go into the reserves for things like that. Okay. The rest of it's really meant for the monthly grass or weekly grass cuttings and all that type of stuff. Okay. Uh, but uh, and and typically, and you know, we can you know work with the city and show you our, our contract with our HOA management company and, and all those type of things. Um, just one more, since it was brought up, and we've talked about this before you've been here so many times, I'm actually shocked I'm even going to ask it, but I'm going to do it anyways. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, when working with new developments with local schools, I mean, do you guys ever have any relationships with schools as far as any sort of funding, finances, anything of that nature? I mean, typically, no. Uh, I mean, some, some areas <coughs> have established uh, assessments and things like that, but typically, we, we, okay. um, you know, we'd like to look to the fact that the values of these homes are going to help bring some money into the school districts at a, at a, at a good pace. Yes, there is a little bit of lag, but sounds like the school system, you know, is better than most. <laughs> yeah. uh, there's other areas that we're in that, you know, schools are at 95% capacity. <laughs> yeah. Okay. They get roughly is is We're doing it all over. So if you want a new house, that's what you get. Yes, if you want a new house, that's what, that's what, I mean, are we are we happy about new homes starting at 275 or 250 even? No. Uh, our company is frankly founded on, on offering a, you know, an affordable option uh, that the only other company split away from a larger company saying, hey, I want to start entry level homes and that's what our bread and butter is, that's what we want to be. And we struggle when these prices are going up and up and up. But that's what new home costs are. I mean, I've been doing this for 35 years, and and uh, if you told me 35 years ago I'd be selling houses for $275,000, I'd say it's crazy. But that's where that's where the market is today. It, it is there. We're, we're a much. Mm -hmm. It's a much discount I mean, from uh, down in Uber Heights. Uh, yeah, it's under, in, in, in under Twin Canada. Creeks. Through, throughout code, you know, from three weeks, it was out past the pool on the left. I mean, my parents are out there. They filled all those lots out over during the COVID time. So they were the same price houses. It's a lot better than the house. I mean, I mean the well, I'll, there. I'll give you an example. A house on Smith Street that's 48 years old just sold for two fifty nine. dollars and backed up to an apartment. I understand. And they sell it. The Cost you $250,000 to build a house. It's a five bedroom, three times. Hold back from that. It's a monster. You got my eye on it. But if I was going to build that house today, it's going to cost me $400,000. Because of the price of insurance and all this. It cost me $400,000. Anything else? Yeah, one more question. In your home, is everything going to be contractor grade or is it going to be a step above contractor <clears throat> grade? Well, so we have our basic product offerings, whether it be the vinyl flooring or, or Formica countertops, and then we offer upgrades. So if you don't want vinyl flooring, if you want to do luxury vinyl planking, hey, we'll do that. It's five thousand dollars. If you want, okay. if you want upgraded countertop, it's twenty-eight hundred dollars, and so on and so forth. It's very common for people to do thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars in upgrades in our homes. Okay. So what I'm getting at, you're not going to be putting tile in anywhere, like mm -hmm. the old hard. Like tile. Yeah, that's, that is an option if people. If they want. Yeah. Frankly, most people don't pick it. The big thing these days is this, uh, you know, faux wood flooring. Yeah. That's what everybody okay. wants now. All right. Thank you. Very, very. I walked some homes in Union last week, and, and many of them, the entire first floor was faux wood, and the entire second floor was carpet. All right, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lindsay. All right, thank you very much, sir. We appreciate it. Uh, your time and uh, the information, very helpful. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry.
plan in the future to have sort of a mommy farm and that basin would throw cold water on those plans. So um, I know you're researching that, whether we would be forced into annexation. Um, As you so intended. It's easy that otherwise, what good is four acres on the edge of town if you can't have chickens? Okay. Uh, if you can't have a goat? Um, you're currently residential zoned in the county. Are you aware of that? You're not agriculture zoned. Your use is agriculture, but your actual zoning is residential. So have you consulted with the county that if you could have farm animals? Or if you're a township. And well, township does it, and yeah, I get you in the township, but it all comes down to your zone. So your use is agriculture. So we looked at that. The actual zoning is residential too. So unless at farming is a permitted use at the county level for that residential too, you may or may not be able to have chickens or cows or animals. So, animals. so I just want you to be aware of that. So you got to look at your permitted uses. You, yeah, you got to look at your permitted uses within that residential two zoning. Like for us, the only place you can have chickens in the city is under agriculture. So you live in any residential zone in the city, whether it be R2, R4, R5, no farm animals. So what's concerning is I'm letting you guys know as a courtesy, you might want to call the county and find out what your permitted uses are under R2 zone, because that's, that's what you're in. Even though we're not city, Yes, you're still township. So Pike, you're Pike Township, or is that Beth Bethel? I'm sorry. So Bethel Township does have your zoning, but Clark County Community Development. Tell you what, tomorrow I'll call up there for you because I know the guy. And then get all the information, and I'll give you guys a call. Mm -hmm. Sure. But for the future, sure. for future reference, we don't want to add restrictions for our use, and then that would affect if we were to to sell. You know, somebody wants more acres to mow it. Mm -hmm. There was a um, there was a gentle there was. There was a gentleman here, I don't know if you know him, not long ago, kind of said the same thing about the same part. You may know the guy. He looked kind of like that guy over there. He, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but he, he did a really good job saying the same thing. I'm just teasing you. No, but thank you. Remember, I started that conversation by saying I promised my wife. Right. <laughs> so that must be the wife. <laughs> That's the wife. No, thank you both for coming. Right. Anyone else on this topic before we move forward? All right. Moving on. To, let's see. Uh, city manager's report. Mr. Bridge, I'll hand it to you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of public uh, and council. I'd like to share with you the city manager report. A lot of this is just informational items, so discussion topics. Mayor's court, December reports uh, that is attached. Uh, rules of council, they are attached. It's something we do every year. So <coughs> we'll give them out. Guys, look them over. We'll be introducing a resolution to accept those. If you have any changes, we can do it on the fly then. <coughs> but I did include that in this meeting packet for you. Another yearly housekeeping thing we do uh, at the beginning of each year is Volunteer Firefighters Defendant Fund Board. The acronym is VFDF. So every year, this is a state, requ the state required uh, board that we're on, given the type of department that we have. So every year, we have to elect two members to be on the board. I don't think you guys ever done anything since the exception of it. Uh, but it is, Jared, just in case we do. So currently, right now, we have Vice Mayor Grimm and Councilman Lindsay. So we'll need a motion request to either keep these two gentlemen on the board for the next year or submit, uh, submit new council members. I'll do a motion to appoint Mr. Grimm. Second. And Mr. Lindsay, you need two. Oh, okay, we can do it. Okay, and Mr. Lindsay. Yeah. And Mr. Lindsay. Yeah, they don't do anything. Yes. <laughs> And that was the last three that made the okay, first. Yeah, okay yeah, motion by me, second by Mr. Rogan. Keep, keep their pay the same thing. Yeah, keep their yeah, pay the same thing. Zero point zero dollars. <laughs> well, I thought it was zero zero point <laughs> zero zero. Yeah, we'll, we'll, give, we'll, give you, we'll give you all the zeros you want. <laughs> Go ahead. All right, Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. I guess. And Councilman Rogan. Yes. That passed at 7 0. Mr. Sir, question. Uh, Mr. Bridge, uh, concerning the, uh, the fire, Volunteer Firefighters Dependent Fund Board, uh, can I get the minutes on the last meeting? You didn't have it met. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, it's an as needed basis. <laughs> no, as needed basis. <laughs> 
Okay, so we'll move on, if that's okay. Uh, 2023 board rosters, we have one, two, three, that'll be up. Uh, everyone else, I think, is due next year, and 25. So we'll have Mr. Steve Fields for the planning board, Mr. Paul Muller for the tax review board, and Mrs. Sue Thompson for the tax review board. Your tax review board is the only one of your boards that have a one-year term, the rest have a three. Um, so every year we have to do the tax review board. Um, so we need a, uh, the motion to reapprove these members will be at the next meeting on the 17th. Oh, it's the next meeting. Sorry, I, I, I misled you. I thought it was this meeting, so it was my fault. My bad. It was my fault. Uh, Parks and Rec Board, Charlotte Farley did resign on 12 5, uh, 12 15 23. We need a motion requested to accept that resignation. Yeah. Hang on. Go ahead, Mr. Wendy. Do you, uh, did she give a reason why she resigned? I'm just curious. She wanted to do more work with tutoring kids, I do believe. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, I'll make the motion. Ms. Hey, did you already have it? You said it? Yeah. Oh, I'll second it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Any discussion, mm -hmm. Council? Uh, when are you ready, Ms. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. <clears throat> Councilman Roadwald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Seven okay, and uh, another bullet point for the Parks and Rec Board. Uh, need to discuss the overall effectiveness operation and bylaws of the board at another time. Um, I know that they've had some turnover, so I don't know if you guys want to look at how many board members are on and stuff like that, but we do need to take a look at those bylaws and kind of switch some things around. Um, Would you get ready to move on? Yeah, that's all right. Okay, go ahead, Mr. Have any of you read Chapter 278, which addresses the Parks and Recreation? If you haven't, it is very ambiguous. And I would suggest, or I'll make a motion, that we hold a work session and go over that Section 278 along with the, the city manager's request. <coughs> Can we do like a 6 p.m. meeting? <coughs> Schedule day, or how much time do people need? Like, if we just start at like six o'clock one day, a little early, or do you want to like a whole separate meeting? I can't hear you. You want to do? You want to do it like you did tonight? And do what you're suggesting uh, at six o'clock, like we started. We can. Is that enough time? I think not. Well, I and I also would suggest the uh, members of the plan. I'm sorry, Park and Rec Board be invited. Um, are you in concurrence with that or? I don't think starting at 6, or at six o'clock before a regular council meeting is going to be enough time. Okay, about 5.30. I can't do that. Okay. So we'll, we'll look at maybe I, doing a separate I'm meeting. I probably <laughs> will have to concur with her. Let's do a separate meeting. So it's up for council to decide on a date. Do um, what? And I'll be honest with you, I don't, we can do it maybe, not this week clearly, next week is not good, then the week of the 17th is the next week of the council meeting. Preferably, can we do it in February? I mean, that's, I mean one of is fine with me, I just want to make sure I got the time on that. The only time I have in February uh, would be February 7th. Let me bring it up real quick. And the 28th Tuesday. That's the two days I have available. What was that, Mr. Lindsay? I'm sorry. February 7th, day after February 28th, and uh, that way full council will be here at, at those two dates. You'll be here. I believe in the 11th. We'll just say from the 20th to the 27th. Yeah. So the 7th and the 28th, we will have a full council of those two meetings. And, and I'm going to book the rest of the meeting. The 7th and the Tuesday. Right? Yes. Yeah. So we got a meeting on the 6th. On the 6th, right. Yes. Right. Council yeah. meetings on the 6th. Yes. And then we have another one on the uh, 20th. 21st. Uh, it's uh, President's Day 
We we'll still have our meeting that day. Right, it'll be on the twenty first. Right. Tuesday the twenty first. On the twenty first. <coughs> I'm fine on the seventh. I mean, that's fine with me. You guys are okay with that. I, I would be better for the twenty eighth. Um, so, if if council, Mr. Cook, are you good with the twenty eighth? I'm good. Whatever. Um, twenty eighth. Uh, I can make the 28 work. And this would be at what? 6? 6.30? What's up for you guys? I'm sorry. 6, 6.30 guys? Six thirty. Are you good? I guess I'll spend my birthday with you guys. I'll bring a cake. My birthday is September 19th. We'll be here. September 18th. And I'll make right. candles. So 6.30 on the 28th. 42. 42. Miss Bernard got that. Say one more time. 6.30 on the 28th of February. We give you bullshit. Come on. All right. Here at the Shelter House? Yes. Yeah. Shelter House is coming back in. What time? 6 p.m. 6 30. To discuss. So the, men, so the the purpose of the meeting is to discuss the Parks and Rec Board? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Or just a few. Because this is made of wood. Second it. <laughs> All right. You, um, uh, well, we keep motion to so okay. Eggleston second. Gotcha. To discuss parks and rec Just board February. at six thirty yes. on February twenty-eighth. Oh, and Eggleston was my second. Yes. And Roadwall, Councilman Roadwall. Sorry. <laughs> yes, Roadwall. <laughs> Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. There we go. Yeah, it's everybody. Seven to All right, thank you. Back to you, Mr. Brewer. Thank you. And moving on to the manager's report. Uh, we all got an email on December 20th regarding the next intergovernmental meeting. Um, so that, I guess, is January 30th. Um, so we need a motion to accept that date. And I guess we're hosting that. You said January 30th? January 30th, according to Ms. Van Fleet. And that's at what time, sir? I don't know. I, know. I think dinner's like it. six, and okay. then the meeting starts at six thirty. All right, second. Oh, okay. Councilman Rodolph. Actually, hold on. Okay. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Councilman Rodolph. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. Councilman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Pass the seven zero. So we usually get Lee's catered. How would we feel about trying something new like Franco the Cootie? I heard he's catering now. He's a local business, something different. What did he have? What well, could, kinds of stuff. What could be more of an Italian? So we can do lasagna, we can do spaghetti. Yeah, you're, yeah, you're guys, I mean, we can do status quo and do Lee's like we always have. We can yeah. try something different. Yeah, yeah, let's, let's try something different. <coughs> let's see, let's see. I'm good with spaghetti and lasagna, aren't you? Rolls. Side salad. What, whatever you want to do, I'm fine with. <laughs> we have to make the decision, not him. <laughs> that's fine. Yes, that's fine. There you go. I'll just run away. That'll yeah. be a surprise. You, you need go. a motion for that? No. Okay. Oh, there's Kathy's. There's a Kathy's. Kathy's? Okay. All right. And moving on to the city manager report. <laughs> it was on the last meeting, but just a friendly reminder the city build, administration building operational update. Effective today, we'll close between 12 and 1 p.m. for staff lunches. To lead to better customer service through the full staff and operating. What we've fallen before is we'd stagger these lunches and then we'd get a rush of people at like 11.30 and we'll not have the staff to accommodate. So we did a little test today. We didn't have very many people come in between those 12 and 1 o'clock hours. I'll keep on looking at that time frame for the next couple weeks. I already mentioned it to our finance director. Push comes to shove. We can adjust it a little bit, maybe 12.30 to 1.30 or 11.30 to 12.30. We are going to trial it, see how this goes. So far, we haven't had any negative feedback. Um, future discussion needed. Um, we didn't want to do it tonight just because of the loaded meeting that we had, as uh, well as getting into this Parks and Rec Board discussion just because of the full agenda. Uh, but the Ordinance 2022-59 uh, Residential Trash Can Replacement, we'll have to revisit that and discuss that at a later date as well. Would it be possible on the 28th to uh, yes. throw that trash can ordinance in? Perfect. And also, I believe that uh, Mr. Rodewald had mentioned something a while back about uh, 
getting some extra money from the city in regard to the baseball association, I would suggest we put all of that on that work session. My kind remark to that is if we could just stagger that out, that's a lot to prepare for for one meeting. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that we're going to have a general idea of what we're going to be doing with the Attic field. Um, so maybe kindly do that at a separate meeting a couple of weeks later, um, just so it's not all in one. Because I still think there's a lot of questions that goes on with that. But I do like where you're head at, kind of combining in the, in the mud. But I think with the Haddock's build, there's mm -hmm. too many unknowns at this point in time. Whatever. And I, I, Mr. Cook, I know Randy and I have talked about um, looking at other facilities, how they handle mm -hmm. the leasing and, 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 and things to make sure that uh, if, if the city is kind enough to give Haddock's Field, uh, which is a city park, um, any sort of funding that, you know, it doesn't <clears throat> upset the or violate the contract with other parks that the city kind of leases out. And going after grants and think mm -hmm. how grant funding would work. Do you think it'd be wise? I'm still on that line from you. <clears throat> Do you think it'd be wise if we had a point of contact that I could go with council because I have to report to all of you as a whole or at a council meeting? There is a lot of work that we need to do as far as looking at other places, how they handle these uh, ballparks, soccer fields, how they do the leases, all that. That maybe we have two or three people on council that we can all work together and they can go back to council, whether it be Mr. Rodol, Mr. Cook, and another person. But at some point in time, we're going to really hit down and like research how other people do this and what are the best practices in this stuff. So um, I can, it's always better to have that council arm with you when you kind of do this stuff that can help feed the information to other council members. And two, it also allows us to gauge where council would be at. But I think it'd be very beneficial if maybe not at this meeting, maybe the next one we look at assigning a couple council members to that Haddock's Field project that will help the administration. This goes hand in foot with that City of Huber Heights workbook that we worked on some time before to have members of council on different committees and yes. I think we can eliminate a lot of, uh, I guess the word is secondary thoughts. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of cities, each council member is on one board. Whether one be, one be uh, over the planning board, one be over the BZA, one be on the parks board. Um, we've also talked about, me and Mr. Cook have talked about for years about getting a finance committee going. We have one person that works with our finance director a public service road route where they get and they meet with Howie and discuss some things that could be a citizen uh, gauge thing too. I we'll have like a member of council, the staff, appropriate staff member and a citizen or two. And that's very, very common with your cities. But <coughs> another mechanism too, you know, me and Mr. Cook have been talking about that for, for many, many years. <coughs> what? Whatever. Okay. Next. All right, back to you, Mr. Bridge. No, oh, I'm done with my city manager report. Happy to entertain any questions. Oh, okay. Any answer, Mr. Bridge, thank you. All righty. We're going to report from comments from members of the public. If you have any questions or comments, please go to the podium. We need your address and name. And please try to keep the comments to five minutes. <coughs> you probably got something to say. Come on, get other down. My name is Mike Norman, 816 Bayberry Drive. Um, if you haven't noticed, I'm not really for the housing development. The guys are, so, honestly, I'm a little disappointed at the turnout. Uh, I don't know if people are busy or don't mind, but my opinion is I'm not for it. Bought that house almost 30 years ago. And the big reason I did, when you look out the back door, I don't want to lock my back door and see somebody's second story window. Or fence. Or tree that does it. So, if it has any meaning, I would really like you guys to consider what it is you're doing. Now, am I for development of the city? Absolutely. I've lived here almost my entire life. I know what the city was when I was born. 
where we're at now. I think industry, business would be a better alternative than just merely cramming 300 houses in 58 lot. But that's up to you guys. So, with that being said, I'm the only voice of opposition. I hope it's strong enough. I don't know what the, uh, the Silver Lake proposal, I don't know what swayed your guys' decision to deny that. Wish I did, because I would repeat the same thing. Was here for a couple of those and had a good turnout and very good points. In Schooling, traffic, the effect on the environment that's there, Silver Lake, all that land. Don't quite have that up on the far end. Right? It's there. Mm -hmm. I agree with Mr. I'm sorry, Bond, with the with the egress that you guys have really have considered. I think it's very important to consider that because it's the first time I saw the map of the current proposal, and nobody is going. Well, first of all, you can't drive around. But everyone's going to be going down at everyone, and even once it's finished. Everyone's going to go down Addison because it's very inconvenient just to get to my house. So why would you drive all the way around just to get mm -hmm. into your belt? So having a clear and safe entrance and exit feels very important. And I hope if you guys do acquire the land, it's done in a professional manner because I'm with you guys in the domain no good. And Mr. Bridge, you said that's what our country was founded on, but I'd say ask how that turned out to the end. Exactly. Thank you. Yeah, I just, I just wanted to comment on, on some of your concerns, and, you know, I, I completely understand what you're saying. Um, you know, with all these developments that, you know, there's always someone who comes and says, and, and not that it's a, it's a wrong argument, you know, that they don't want the one that's gone, or they don't want this one because of the reasons you just stated and so on. I mean, there's never going to be a development where everybody's going to be happy with where it ends up being, unfortunately. And you just can't do that. Um, I would love more business. I've had so many people call me and say, well, you know, we need more business, not more houses. Well, there's businesses that have looked at coming here, but there's not enough houses, so they're not going to build because or, or move the business here. Um, so it's, you know, it's a catch-22. I mean, you've got to have one to have the other, I guess, more or less. So, but, um, and we're not, part, we are not bringing this to you um, the proposal is being brought to us from the developer. It's not us saying, hey, we got an idea, let's build this house. I mean, not, and I'm not against it, per se. I just, uh, you know, it's not us that came up with the idea to do it. It was brought to us by the developers. So, mm -hmm. anyone else have any comments on that? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, so you, you made a uh, comment about why we did not vote on the uh, Army County developer. I can't speak to council, but for myself, I don't think a city should cross county lines and, and, and uh, annex their land. Uh, I was against when Huber did it. I was living in that area when Huber started it, and the uh, township trustees and I was on first name basis, and I can't tell you what the names were. Uh, but that's why I voted no on it. Uh, I had some conversation with Mr. Bridget about it, and I told him the same thing, uh, that I wasn't crazy about going across county lines to another county. It just, in my mind, it creates too many problems, too many complications. On this development, this is in our county. It's just north of us. Uh, we need the housing development to bring in uh, other businesses like a decent restaurant. Uh, I would love to have a, you know, a steakhouse there in town, you know, to, to get a decent meal. Don't have to run to Springfield or, degree, you know, out here to Beaver Creek or, or Huber or Chip City or wherever. And we can't do that without numbers. And they look at rooftops and they look at income. So hopefully these developments will give us the income 
and the numbers that maybe a steakhouse will, or other businesses, I'm just using that because I like steak, uh, to, uh, to come here and build, build a restaurant or, or a different store or, or maybe a Kroger's or something. I don't know. You know uh, but we have to have, the, yes, we have to have the numbers to get there. There was, there was for a long time, I mean, actually, yeah. you're still here. People say, well, New Colorado doesn't want yeah. business. It's like, we, we got to have business or we're gonna, uh, to survive. I mean, you know, I mean, yes, we have a, a business district there downtown, but what type of businesses are they? You know, there, most of them are mm -hmm. is, is, uh, antique stores. Uh, which we have a lawyer downtown. Uh, we have, what, two drug stores downtown. I mean, how many... We how many how many banks do we have in downtown? You know, those those aren't uh, the type of businesses. I mean, it's the businesses we need. Uh, it's the businesses we can support. But I'm looking at I'm looking at uh, restaurant type of businesses or eating places or or uh, I don't know a store that has better whatever. You know. Did you have something, Mr. Bird? Yeah, Mr. Norman, in 2012. A couple months before I was employed with the city, they redid what we call the comprehensive land use plan. And the comprehensive land use plan is how administration does their job. So they, they pass a series of rules, laws, ordinances, policies. So we develop and we do our job based on the policy that council passed. So in 2012, we did the comprehensive land use plan, which entitled, well not titles, encourages the administration to go after these type of developments, which are our buds. I think at one point time before that, it did emphasize on saying a small town. If you're not growing, you're dying. And then that trend was not working out for the city. As we see in 2014, the city was nearly not had any money. Yeah. And now we've, we've grown thanks to the levy of the great citizens that passed. So you see that transition start around 2012. And now we're being more aggressive with the residential. So in the, in the years that I've been employed here, We've had industry come and approach the city. What they look at now is, all right, so if you have, if my business rooftop is here, where am I going to grab my employees from? Are they going to have to drive 30 minutes to get to work? Where are they going to go at lunch break? So when we lack a lot of that stuff, businesses go elsewhere. So we've built up that resident base. We get that rooftop out. That has a ripple effect for the Taco Bells, everything else, and then we'll start securing more of those businesses. Uh, but that's when the transition started for us to be more aggressive with business. And after 2012, you see the new CBS come in, you see the Speedway be redone. So this administration has really taken that comprehensive plan, really taken it and, and grew in the city. Bad Metals grew. Yeah, Bad Metals grew. Bad Metals Holder. grew. Yeah. Um, we had Holder Holder Artie Holder come yeah. into the city. So, yeah, we have. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Uh, my next kick with, with this, now we got the residential side of things coming, is we're going to be pushing for those industrial parks, you know, because that's a cheaper than everyone within the city limits. So um, when you manage a city, you've got to have a very long-range plan. Um, and I told council when I got hired as city manager, it take about 10 years, and that's exactly what it's taken for us to see this growth. But I do have a plan five, 10 years after this as well. Thank you, Mr. Bridge. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? No, what do you on to resolution, Mr. Mm -hmm. if you would, please. Yes. All right. I have resolution 2023-01R, introduction, public hearing, and action tonight. A resolution providing for the permanent transfer of funds from the American Rescue Fund to the Special Revenue and Enterprise Funds of the City of New Carlisle. Mm -hmm. Second. <clears throat> Lindsay Eggleston? Yeah. Okay. Lindsay Eggleston? Mm-hmm. Explanation of this resolution. So all these resolutions tonight were what we call general housekeeping resolutions. So the first two, we'll just start with this one. Anytime there's a transfer in there, we are moving uh, money from one fund to another to pay for a project. And this was discussed during when we had budget work sessions a few months ago. Uh, now that the 2023 year is in effect, now we can add on what council wanted to do with the budget work sessions. Any questions? Are you ready? All right. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Councilman Roadwald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. That is accepted 7 0. We have resolution 2023 02R, 02 introduction, public hearing, and action tonight. A resolution providing for the permanent transfer of funds from the general fund 
to the debt, service, capital projects, and enterprise funds of the city of New Carlisle. So, second. Uh, explanation of this resolution again is a, a housekeeping uh, uh, resolution is transferring funds from the general fund to certain other funds in the city. Councilman, questions? Are you ready? Councilman Roadwald. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. Councilman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Lynch. Yes. I pass 7 0, resolution 2023 03 R, introduction public hearing and action tonight. A resolution providing for the permanent transfer of funds from the Enterprise Fund to the Capital Projects Fund of the City of New Carlisle. Mm -hmm. An explanation of this fund, uh, our final house one of the night, housekeeping board uh, resolution of the night. Now uh, this one will take uh, water from our wa uh, water operating to our water capital improvement fund for a total of five thousand dollars. Ready to get it going? All right. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Councilman Roadwell. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. Councilman Eggleston. Yes. That passes 7 0. Okay, the next are ordinances, and these are all read only tonight. Ordinance 2023 20, 01, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on January 17th. An ordinance authorizing the city manager or the director of public service, assistant city manager, to enter into an agreement with Peterson Construction Company for the purchase and installation of a primary clarifier and a secondary clarifier and the demolition of two clarifiers for the wastewater treatment plant. I have ordinance 2023-02, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on January 17th. An ordinance to proceed with submitting to the electors of the city the question of the renewal of an existing 3.0 mil tax levy for the operation of the New Carlisle Fire and EMS Department. We have ordinance 2023-03, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on January 17th. An ordinance to proceed with submitting to the electors of the city the question of the renewal of an existing 1.0 mil tax levy for public health purposes. Ordinance 2023-04, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on January 17th. An ordinance rezoning approximately 79.136 acres of property bounded by Addison, New Carlisle Road to the east, Drake Road to the south, Bayberry Drive to the west, and the Bethel Pike Township line to the north to residential planned unit development, RPUD, and also approving a preliminary planned unit development plan. Ordinance 2023-05, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on January 17th. An ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into a free annexation agreement with Clayton Properties Group Incorporated, DBA Arbor Homes, and the current property owners. Ordinance 2023-06, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on January 17th. An ordinance regarding the arrangement for provision of improvements for an RPUD planned unit development district. Other business city offices will be closed Monday, January 16th to observe Martin Luther King Day. Um, Council, any other discussion? Mr. Cook. What are we doing about my light? Mm -hmm. Howie, uh, give me an update. Uh, 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 the, uh, the utility company, the electric company has to come out and put a new, something new up. So we're at about waiting for them to construct that. Okay. Uh, <laughs> How about our shoulder house? It's still in the request for proposal. Phase. Nothing on that. Mm -hmm. Out to bid. Okay. I'm done. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Any comments? I would like a council motion to remove the executive session uh, due to the fact that I don't have any year end numbers yet. Remove it. Motion by Mr. Rogal. <laughs> and a second by. Second. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Mm -hmm. I think it's a new new executive session. Yep. Was that a yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. Councilman Eggleston. 
Councilman Lindsay? No. <laughs> Councilman Rodewald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. That passes yes. six to one. All right. A motion to, a motion adjourn. to adjourn. Second. I mean, no. a motion. Asking for a motion. Motion. So moved. Second. Um, it was five to one. Yeah, he, Did I forget you? Uh, no, I didn't ask the Vice Mayor for him. Yes. Oh. My apologies. Okay, motion by Mr. Lindsay to adjourn, second by Ms. Eggleston. All right, Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Lewis. Councilman Rodolph. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Krim. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yep. Councilman Eggleston. Eggleston. Yes. Thank you. We are adjourned. Have a good evening, everyone.